Okay, cool. All right, it's uh, August sixth, August eighteenth, twenty twenty two. I'll add the notes, the link to the notes in the chat. All right. So for today, the only thing I wanted to do was um, just look at the performance period child to see if there was any, any significant changes. All right, let's take a look. Good. All right, these are already looking much better. Okay, let's have a look at these. So um, I forget if we saw this last time in the density test, if we had a chance to compare some of the numbers for the, the 200 density test. Let me load both of these. Oh, okay, 600 of oh, sweet. That's great. Um, wait, let's get to the oh, there we go. Okay, so 600 VMs. Let's have a look at these numbers. Okay, awesome. That's great. Okay, so let's see what else. Here, delete count looks great. Get endpoints. Interesting. Yeah. I don't know what it's so I let's see what else we have. All this stuff looks good. I mean, this is like looks like totally random, like has no correlation to the basically what I'm looking for is like think like if, if we see any correlation between this number and this number over time or across jobs, then then it's something we have to either question, like if it makes sense, or um, or if it like something we need a threshold on. So I don't I don't know. I was, this is this seems do you maybe interesting want to, to me. like put that in the uh, in the document because uh, sure. I'm very sure like next time we look at it, uh, we'll forget. Yeah, let's have a look at that. So um Okay, so this is 600 if you want to, let me just link to the job here. Yeah, that's, let me have one of these just to make this a little prettier. Okay, so that's something to look at. I think it's a little weird. Let's see what else is in here. It all looks good. So I had a question. Um, these uh, matrix value, right? Um, the list get um, and batch. Are these um, is this like a static list or do we generate this um, at runtime? We generate this after the test, I think. But, uh, so this are, these are um, these come from Prometheus. And we generate them after the test um, and we we do it over, we grab the, the data over the duration of the test. So like we basically run, we have like checkpoints. We get like a point in time when we start, a point in time when we end, and then we we capture the data over this period of time. No, I mean, what I mean to ask is, so let's say the test, uh, let's say there is a new version of Qbert, right? And that uh, gets a new API, let's say foo. Um, mm -hmm. So for the next test that gets run, will like get foo count be added to this list? 
Oh, um, it, it, it only depends on whether like during this test, if that API is called. It's called it. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. So we're only like, right, we're only creating and deleting VMIs. So if, for example, we were doing this with VM pools or something, then I would expect like, you know, create whatever VM pools to be on this or get VM pools, whatever it is like that we would be doing. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's, okay. that's what I could add it here. Okay, so these are like, I mean, these look like they have a positive correlation. Um, this one's a little weird. I, this looks like it's kind of random. I mean, it's like, it doesn't. So like, our, the, what, what do we usually do is we usually relate it to the, to the create pods cow. That's the, what's like the most accurate. So, um, I mean, that's this, this, this looks, well, okay, this one maybe, but these two for sure. Yeah, and that endpoints again, it looks double maybe. Yeah, so that looks like a two to one and a one to one for these. Okay, let's leave a note. We can maybe, there's maybe a potential threshold there. I think we could add, uh, let's see. Yeah, patch pods counts. That kind of makes sense as a one to one. Let's, I can see that. There we go. Oops. There's definitely potential there for a threshold. And then this one maybe is a two to one, I guess. That seems, seems logical. Maybe we can see if that holds over a few tests. Maybe that's update to the status, I guess. Yeah. Um, all right, what else? Um, oh, actually, so, oh, wait a second. We actually have, um, I forgot. We don't, we don't have thresholds in this test. Let me check the other one. Let me pull the other one as a reference. So we, where's our, um, Here we go. So these half thresholds, I think, um, if I remember correctly, actually, these might already be, have them, let's just compare. Okay, so we have update patch. Okay, so the patch threshold. So this is 100, oh, let's say like, so, between these two. So this is, um, what would I say? Patch first machine instances. Patch first machine instances is about a two to one. This is less than a two to one because it should be a hundred, right? Um, 121, okay, so you know, we're roughly hundred. So we have to 242. So it's a two to one relationship and we actually have less. So, okay, we do have a threshold here. So actually, um, let's see, that's two to one in the, um, I think that makes sense. We, that it, since it's actually holding here in this job, and then this is a little bit over two to one, but let's look at the, so where is it? Uh, update endpoints count, let's look. Update endpoints count, it's a little, over a one to one, which is it's higher here. It's a little over two to one. Maybe there's a relationship between, between these two. No, no, it's two. Hmm. Okay, I don't know about this one. This doesn't really, so this, this idea of like one-to-one -one doesn't really hold. Well, I mean, it's like one-to-one -one plus a constant or something. It's like, yeah. hmm, do I have that right? It's update endpoints? Yeah, okay. Hi, Ryan, Andre from the desk. Hey, how are you? 
after you finish this, can we talk a, lot, a little bit about the tasks I need to accomplish and we grab some ideas? Yeah, sure. Do you have, um, please add it to the uh, agenda. I have it, if you don't, um, here, I'll share it in the... Um, can you shoot yeah. on the chat again because I arrived yeah. late? You got it. Okay. Patch, let's get in points. Oh, wait, hold on a second. I was looking at the wrong one. Patch pods count was the one I wanted to look at, right? So patch pods count was, so this was two, this is one to one. Let's look at this. Patch pods count. Okay, so this is this is actually holding pretty well across both. That's one to one, one to one. Okay, that's pretty good. I think we need to have a. That seems like it makes sense to me. Okay. Pretty good. Let's take a look at a few others. So did we already say this one, the update and the VM count? Or did I have a load notes here? Update, no, okay. So update VM count and, okay, here we go. So we have a 10 to one ratio. 600, okay, we're a little over, interesting. Right, 611. Oh, no, no, we're just under actually. No, no, I'm wrong. It, we are over. So it, it's over 10 to 1, right? Am I math right? So it's like it's, um, it should be 6110. Yeah, yeah we're 6240. So we are over. So we're actually over the threshold here. That's interesting. So I guess what's happening is like, so looking at the, this is, this is interesting data. So we have on a smaller scale of 100. We're getting, we don't have to have as many updates as the larger scale we do. So I'm guessing we're going to get, so we're hit with this is like a reflection of um, some like uh, some 400 errors that we're hitting, some conflicts, some 405s or something. That's interesting. So it's roughly, I mean, so it, this was. Um, Okay, so the ratio is about six, six out of ten, or six times uh, the was the was the ratio. So, okay, so it like slowly climbs to about this is about it's like ten and a half here, or ten and a quarter, or something, maybe less, ten point one or something. It's interesting. Okay, yeah, it okay. would be interesting to oh, see yeah. if this stays at ten is to one throughout the tests. Yeah. Hmm. We had a um, so hundred. In my test six to one. call like ten point one to one. Okay, this is something we're we should follow up on. Let's see if we'll see if this holds and see if it goes over. These are good to add. All right, let's see what else we have. Um, Okay, the VMI creation times. All right, let's do a little comparison here of our smaller scale. Okay, much faster. Okay, all right, many times slow. This is, this is interesting. Okay, so we're at 600 and we're, so the, the idea with this test is we're creating them. I don't think there's any way. I think we create them like as fast as we possibly can. So the, this is, how long it's going to take for these 600. Hmm. Okay, so our time is going to go up, I guess, as we, um, the more we create. Well, 
I think this is one of the things that Marcelo was talking about that he measured where this, this happens. Hmm. We don't really want this. This isn't, this isn't ideal. So we're gonna need more data to figure out what to do, what we can do about this. I wonder like what, um, yeah, All right, we'll have to think of something. Is this yeah. for 600 or a D smaller one? I believe this is 600, right? Let's see. Do I have on the right one? Yeah, this yeah. is 600. Yeah. So this is this number, the P90, and this is 10 minutes. 10 minutes to run in the worst case, from creation to running. Um, do we have yeah. any data on, so I know that after creation to running, there are like a bunch of Kubernetes things that happen, like binding PVC and, um, you know, picking the right node and stuff like that. So, um, is there any kind of data point on where that time is being spent while going to running state? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, well, this is where um, it would be good to gather all of the the phase transitions to see, like, to get a measurement of like exactly the breakdown was what the breakdown was. I think um, maybe we can get. I think there's a dashboard. Marcella has the dashboard for this somewhere in Grafana that I think is public. I'll have to dig it up, or maybe I have it. Is this it? I think this is it. And we should be able to see the different um, phase transitions. Okay, so let me see. So this is from, what is, what is this? Uh, um, I think it was just, oh, I can't see the thing. Uh, 817, so it's just yesterday. Or just, uh, yeah, just yesterday. So I think it's this one. So this looks like start rate creation time. Okay, so let's zoom in here. Looks like a, a big number. Yeah, there's our 600. Hmm, we don't have the scheduling. We don't have the scheduling data. We're not. Okay. Oh, okay. So here's a little bit of a breakdown. So this is the, this, how long it took to get to the scheduled phase. So, so there's some um, is, info. can you give a little more context on what? The, so, is this the time that is spent in scheduled phase? I need to look at the look at the. Uh, oops. Oh, I don't know if I can look at the metric. So, I, what I believe it is. Um, Hold on, let me see. Putting my face on. Okay, I, I don't know how to look at the, how the this is generated, but the what I believe it is, it, it's the time it took to transition from scheduling to scheduled. Hmm. Okay, wait. Well, but these are oh, these are two different though. Like, so this is um. I don't know what this one is. This might be the time since the VMI was created, I think. So wait, running, does that make sense? Because it sort of it should be additive here, right? Yeah. So green should be on top. So but what about the orange? Yeah, so then this is, okay, so this is additive. So, okay, that, that makes sense. So this is the time since it was scheduled. All right, this is a good, it's actually a really good depiction. Zoom in on this one. So the okay, so VMI was created, and the time since then was to. I don't know if it's to reach scheduled phase or if it's like to transition out of scheduled phase. So it it's, it's one of the like, two. Like, uh, it seems to me that at five minutes, like. If you look at the middle line, like right when there are two running 
green ones um up up to 5 minutes it's in scheduling like scheduled state and then from there on up to 6 minutes it's in running state that like that's how i am interpreting i don't know if i'm right yeah i mean let's think about it. so we we create the vmi it goes to pending state it goes to scheduling state so it's going to scheduling extremely quickly mm-hmm. and it's going to scheduled state so i guess it's like the then it goes to running state yeah. and it goes to so, succeeded so it's the start i think yeah so it's in addition to it that time between like a node assigned to that launcher pod and mm-hmm. up to the point when that launcher pod actually starts the vm i think that's where yeah. most of the time is being spent if we are interpreting this data correctly yeah that's so it's it's vmi and scheduling phase right which is like kubernetes is doing work to make set a sign a node create a pvc or something whatever yeah okay yep uh do we have like a pvc binding or unbinding um, data points here in this dashboard I don't think so. Um let's take a look though. Wait, let me work you out of it. Oh, storage operations. Oh, there might be a CD related. Hmm, you can show up. Okay. I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't know what's supposed to be in here. Maybe it'll load in a few minutes. Okay. So um well I, I think though what would be so this is good. I mean this is like uh, this is kind of good goes along lines of what you know Marcel has observed where like as we increase the number of of create requests. which it looks like that happens until let's see when's the last scheduling okay here it is so 50 to 56 so it looks like over 5 minutes as we do the creating yeah okay and then we stop and it basically takes well, let me get rid of these um so we can let's just do running okay so and it stops and then we go the remaining uh I wish I had a count no oh, here we go okay so so okay roughly it's like we are at 3 4 500 so our 10 minute ones are the the yeah the last the last 100 or so yeah so let me look at it again so if I, So the last ones created but they're like created right here if i uh, 1655 right so i guess they don't go and they don't go into running phase until all the way over here i think that's what this means hmm. okay well I, i i don't know let's we'll, we'll have to i think like the the thing from this is like I, i'm really interested to see like like these numbers the yellows here um uh is like the thing that we want to explore more i i think it's like it's somewhere in kubernetes in the way that it's going through and scheduling these things like maybe we can find some more data some way we can make something more efficient there or or something because um yeah because our this is just get, seems like it's just going to keep increasing you know as we increase the numbers number of vmis it just increases i i i don't think this happens with pods i don't know if anyone's familiar but i, I don't know i don't think so I mean it's just 600 pods like I don't think we would expect to see this massive like a 10 minutes 10 minutes to actually get it to a uh, to running phase. Well, actually it's not to running phase. It's like it's no actually it would be because we're saying scheduling to to scheduled phase. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ryan, can you talk a little bit about what the uh the cluster resources look like where this test is running? Let me see if I have it documented here. Um because I don't recall it, it's all I know about it's There a dedicated was a document uh that the Marcelo show show me. 
but they don't yeah. have it. It's it might be in here somewhere. Sorry, I don't mean but to. It's to not go. big. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. I I can I'll see if we can locate. It. I think it's in the notes somewhere. And we can. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's an important question because we do have to put some context to this because, I mean, is 600, if, if we're really stressing the API server at 600, maybe we need to figure out more resources and that's just what this is showing and it's not actually a reflection of anything. So, it's a good question. I, I, I don't know. There would be a good data point, right? Like, with yeah. these resources, <laughs> the tests, so the tests show that 600 VMIs is like a stress point. Um, like I'm like I'm talking in context of we were discussing somewhere what would be like good things to share um, when when going to v1 this comes to my mind yeah the thing is though with with this this count right this is 100 this is 150 like I, I would still expect a um, I mean, we should be able to handle this, right? Like we shouldn't be, like it, it is It is clearly, there's a relationship between the VMI count and the performance. Yeah. And I mean, it's it's like immediately after, like anything above a hundred. And that's, I don't know. I, I think that's seems kind of strange because I, I mean, a hundred VMIs, I mean, I don't think these are very big, like, seems strange that we would, even in a, if a dedicated cluster doesn't have a ton of resources, I mean, we should have enough resources to do 150 and not, you know, lose performance. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, okay, well, but we'll just leave it here. I, I'll, let me find this thing and um, so let's do a study on this because I, I, I don't know, this is, that's is we'll just oh. out, let's just out all that. Let's just rule out that idea and then we can, um, I think the next step after that is like, we can clearly see that there's um, a slowdown in the scheduling time. We're gonna need to do some further investigation, either metrics, like I, I think the best thing to go with this is that I think we're gonna need some sort of metrics that appear just like this in a few areas that are targeted, like what we think are slow. And I think maybe PVCs or something with Kubernetes or signing something with the networks signing networks or something we should try and find and attach those things yeah um quick question uh, so if you go to the dashboard um i see in you know, on the top that there is a so after the general it's cubeboard um is there a section that is related to kubernetes like on on the top top bar oh oh you see up here let's see Oh, yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay. We might be able to find some. So this is the API server. Oh, this is the last hour. Where's my, um, I lost my time frame. So let me see. What well, would include? Okay, the last two days. Yeah. There are also other. Yeah, I'll go. I'll go in a second. Let me see. Yeah, you can see the. This is our window where we're doing a lot of work. Hmm. Work your depth. I mean, everything is sort of indicating that we're doing a lot of work. Hmm. Memory spikes. Not a ton, but it does. Okay, let's see. What else did you want to look at? Um, Cluster compute resources. What's this? Let's see. Ooh, okay. So oh. our density test, we are. That's Monitoring is spending a lot of resources. Nice. Memory utilization, 11. Yeah, I was hoping if we had like a PVC or some kind of um, other um, things in there. Okay. 
I'll go back. Let's see. Let's see if you can spot anything. Workload and space. No. Let's see. Yeah. Or system. Yeah. Last seven days, nothing. Oh no, this this is just space utilization. It's yeah. Um, maybe if you can go to controller manager, um, that that's what process is the. PVC. Zero up. Okay. Well, <laughs> I, I think it's missing. It's just not counting the data. I don't know. Um, let's see this. I'm guessing this is just oh, okay. Cube system. So all right. Hmm. Okay. That's fine. <clears throat> okay. Well, um, I'll try to explore. Okay. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. Yeah, I think um, we can do some. We can do some uh, some looking at it. I don't know. This, this is um, yeah. I, the thing that I would say though, like Marcel has said previously, like that that this was expected, and like we've we sort of come across this in a few different ways. Like when he talked about you know increasing the amount of threads and how to improve performance. So there, um, it's sort of expected, but I mean, still though. It, we don't want to well actually maybe that's the question like i wonder if this has the Mar marcello's change in um the number of um i forget what he changed it was the um i think it was the rate limiting on the client the number of active um or open requests i think that's what he increased i i don't know what version of qbert this is actually running and if it has those changes because i don't think this gets redeployed so perhaps it's missing that and maybe that's what we're observing is the same phenomenon that he did. Mm. Okay. All right. Another open question. All right. I, I'm going to ask this one to Marcelo. I'll send him a message and see if he, um, see if we can, I can shed some light on this. Okay. I think, um, so I think we're, done on looking at these i think this is good this is still remaining stable um this is really good information i think for a comparison and oh so here's okay the 100 density test yeah i'm mean, still within the or much closer to the um the other density test interesting yeah i think um this is the one that's going to be interesting we'll look at the See, the, these are the numbers that I think we want to bring down, but we should be able to, I think, well, since we have these two, this will actually be valuable to see. I wonder if like, whatever we do to fix this number, if it affects these. So I think we've got a few things we can look at here. Okay. All right, that was good. All right, let's let's uh, let's go to the next topic. So Andre, you want to talk about? Um, yeah. You've got a topic. Yeah, go ahead. Um, we are creating a stress test on our solution for 100,000 concurrent uh, Windows 11 RDP sessions. Uh, we are able to do the over AI, the creation of the VMs and everything. This is fine. Uh, the missing is something uh, to see the remote desktop session actually because we expose them over a web browser. Uh, is there any tool that came to mind to be able to open 100,000 web browsers, one for each session and see every uh, RDP session? Because um, I, there might be, there might be something in the tests. There might be some, yeah, sorry. That that's why there might be something in the test that um, that do this. I think I've seen this before. Um, like, do you do you actually need to open a browser in a session, or can you like yes. just do it over? Yes. But can you do it over like to interact with the session? Like, 
push some buttons inside the remote desktop session and things like that. Okay, let me see what, um, so where I'd look is in this, in the RDP tests that are in, in here. I don't know if I'll be able to find them. Let me see. Yeah, I'm not sure where they are. The uh, like when that's what I would look for though, because. Um, Yeah. Well, uh, I passed this video to my developers anyway. Uh, if you can send me later, this can be very helpful. Yeah. I, yeah. I've, I would, so what I was hoping for is like, I, I pretty sure there's some code that we have that is in the test that is like doing something interacting with RDP or, and is like doing some interactive testing there. Uh, mm -hmm. If not, and I mean, we might just be out of luck, but that that's like at least how like some of the um, um, like there's already some like like there I know there's some code like that interacts with like a serial console that will do some interactive stuff on the on the VM. So yeah. I I don't know I think along the somewhere along the same lines we could do with RDP if it doesn't exist. Um, but that's why I was asking you about the browser, like if it needs to be actually going and simulating something in the browser, if it could just be going through. Um, using a client and and accessing it and yeah on the beginning that there was a spice uh, protocol support on on these mm -hmm. but they remove it completely okay that's why we are doing everything on rdp uh, i'm not sure if, if if that will help but there is like a selenium which is like yes uh, this is based on yeah. selenium what we are trying to build yeah okay. Oh, okay 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 uh our solution but if someone already have done something can be very helpful <laughs> okay uh then we don't need to start from scratch uh yeah can... i don't think so i i think so I, if i find something in the test i'll send it to you uh andre but yeah i don't know if there's anything at least i can't yeah. see anything right now uh, also, remember that I'm trying to automate the <clears throat> installation of NVIDIA drivers. Uh, I find a way to find a file inside NVIDIA that has latest for you know. Remember? Oh, good. Uh, yeah, I... Can I share here on the screen? Sure. Uh, this is for Linux guests. If you go here, there is uh, this file here. The one you just linked in chat? I put it on the chat. <laughs> okay. Uh, because okay. Uh, you was, I, I can share my screen now, you stop. Uh, as you can see, there is the NVIDIA latest drivers for Linux guests. The missing part for me is to find what are the grid, uh, the NVIDIA Linux KVM, that zip. This, I don't find a way to, to, to download. I'm using these links here to download the drivers so far uh, but the latest are uh, uh, version 14 can you explain a little bit about that the difference why the linux version is not on on 14 and they are working on 14 for for uh for instance and vmware and and windows hypervisor I I, I don't know. I don't know why it's um what the I don't know what the um 
the difference. Like I don't know like why why it's on why it's not on fourteen. I I don't know. Yeah, uh, is there someone on Nvidia we can talk to about that? There should be um there should be a way to reach out through um the like the like there there are like the customer facing people who are usually interface with that you would have this information. I don't know. I like I, they they usually publish this stuff somewhere. I, I don't know where it is. I've never I've never done it before. I've never reached out to some of those folks. So I, I don't know what are the usual channels that people do to reach out to the I, I don't know whatever like the whatever like you, whatever you do for like customer support, I think is where you'd want to go through and they yeah where you look for this. Uh, I talked to Google that is our let's say data center and they say yeah. We don't know <laughs> who don't we know. need to talk okay. to. <laughs> That's why I'm size trying to search around. Perhaps you can talk around inside NVIDIA and find a way to automate that in a proper way. Yeah, I, I forwarded your your like uh, your ask on to to someone that I thought would help, but I haven't I didn't hear back. So I I don't know. Like it, it's it might not be. It might not be helpful for like because I don't know I'm not I don't interface a lot with some of those yeah the the customer reps so it's like it's hard for me to say like um, if I'm talking to the right people or not I don't know yeah so that, that's why I would say go through the you know whatever your vendor is yes the vendor uh, download the drivers and enable them on on them websites to be downloaded. Yeah. Uh, but there, there is always a let's say sometimes big gap six months between the latest drivers I can download from Nvidia and the drivers that I'm I'm able to download from from Google for you understand. And sometimes I already find huge performance issues without the latest and greatest. You understand? I, like. I yeah, I mean, again, I I don't know. Like, this is where like I would go and talk to the customer reps because this is where I mean, that's where you'll get the information. Okay. Anyway, thank you so much for your time. Uh, if uh, anyone has an idea, I appreciate that for, for sure. doing the stress test on on hundred thousand. Yeah, I like I said, do like I showed on my screen. Look in the tests repo of Qvert and see if there's something you can copy there. There's already a bunch of functional tests for working with zero consoles. So maybe there's something uh, for RDP can there. You put on the chat the link. Yeah. Yeah, look look in here and this is where the functional tests are. I don't know where specifically like all the zero console tests are in here. Like it'll take me a few minutes to find it, but it's in there is where I, I know there is because I've seen them. So like in here, there's there'll be some, uh, you know, look for, I don't know, something with cloud in it or something, um, or maybe you just need to search for serial, serial console and or VNC or something and and find something. Let me give you some useful, useful resources in there. Wonderful. It's a nice, uh, it's better than start from scratch. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Cool. Okay. All right, thanks, Andre. Thank you so much. Okay. I have, All right. uh, like uh, I have a request to you, Andre. Like if you if you are uh, doing this this test, um, could you maybe share um, like some results afterwards? Like I'm not sure what what exactly is is this test, etc. But I feel it would be nice to to get some some input on, on uh, maybe some metrics that, that you uh, that you gather, uh, maybe something something we could uh, improve later uh, as well. Yes, let me tell you what- Because that, are... that, that sounds that... like a huge scale and, and that's, yeah. that's something to- These 100,000 okay. concurrent users mean 10 cluster with 10,000 users in each cluster, or you understand, okay? Probably yep. we, we 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 have when we have the results we say something here or on the regular uh, uh, on Wednesday's meetings from Covert. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That would be great. Thank you. Wonderful. No problem at all. Cool. Okay.
All right, thanks, Andre. Okay, uh, let's see. I, those are the only agenda items we have today. So if there's nothing else, let's uh, we'll end the uh, nine minutes early. Yes, can you send me the, the video because it was very interesting. I would like to see what you was discussing before I arrive. Oh yeah, sure. So what happens is, um, um, here I'll just stop sharing. The, so what happens